Well, I guess a blank wall is a pretty good place to start. My name is Larry Klein, and the work that I'm creating for the self-isolation residency is called Patrolling the Perimeters. To create this piece, I'm using robotic vacuums, each one patrolling its own individual quadrants inside a larger square. And they're meant to occasionally collide with each other. So riding the robots will be sugar tanks, sort of like sugar skulls. And as they collide with each other, they're going to be cleaning up their own messes. I started with the assumption that I was going to use Roombas, and that's because I know that they're well built and they're durable, and I've seen lots of videos of them dragging cats around rooms, so I know that they're pretty sturdy. Um, but I researched the virtual walls that they use to limit the vacuum's travel, and I came to the conclusion that the infrared beams actually might be kind of problematic. A lot of the work that I do is based on experimentation, but in the days of coronavirus, it's a lot harder to um, you know, purchase materials, experiment with them, send them back if needed, and then switch to something else. So I have to make a pretty educated guess the first time around. So I switched instead to Eufy vacuums. They use a little bit less sophisticated system, and they use magnetic strips on the floor to actually limit the travel of the robots. And this actually seems like a good solution because it's also going to let me grid the floor out, and I wanted to do that anyway. So hopefully they'll be able to come right up to the demarcated edge um, and really uh, hit each other nicely. So the robots are in the mail, phrase I love to say, and uh, now I can start to think about the second phase of this project. So I think I've got everything I need to get started. This over here is UFI number one of four robotic vacuums that I'll be using um, to traverse the territory and protect it. I've plugged these guys in and charged them up to make sure that they're working okay, and they seem to be so far. Um, I've got some materials to make the sugar tanks that are going to go on top of this. Big bag of granulated sugar, and I've got lots more of these in storage. Um, meringue powder to mix with the sugar to uh, toughen them up so they harden. And uh, over here, I've got the molds that I'm going to be using. So these are made using a vacuum form machine, um, and I made the original model out of cardboard and toothpicks and junk. Um, and to keep them co from collapsing in the vacuum, I stuff them. Um, you can see here that I've also spread them out a little bit, so hopefully it'll be easier for the sugar to release and come out. This is actually the turret. It goes on top of the tanks. Um, this is the right track for the right side, and you can see these are actually made out of bottle caps from water bottles, and this is the corrugation from the cardboard, so it's really just, the original is kind of made out of junk, but. I think it's gonna be a pretty good result in the end. And then this is the barrel for the gun. So it's kind of complicated. This is actually a seven part mold. So I did some tests with the robots and they don't like to hit each other head on. I think they have infrared beams that they could recognize, but they will hit each other at sort of oblique angles. So I think the trick is maybe I'm going to need to build some kind of skirts around the outside of these so that uh, there will be something that will be able to hit straight on sugar to sugar. So I'm mixing up my sugar for my tanks here. Should be about one cup of sugar for one cup teaspoon of water powder. and one teaspoon of water. Hoping to have enough here to do the turret. There's two cups. And three teaspoons of meringue powder. I think I should probably mix this stuff up by hand. I'm going to start with three teaspoons, and it's possible I might have to double this. 
this is supposed to have the consistency of wet sand and we are nowhere near that. And there's our eighth teaspoon. Close, but it's still falling apart a little bit. Nine is a magic number. Now I've tripled the amount of water in this recipe. This is starting to feel right. Having never done this before in my life, it's starting to feel right. <laughs> it feels good. I think this is going to be a very good result. And now seeing how much water this is retaining makes me wonder if I use too much. But I imagine I can just let it dry more. So this is day three and the mold still hasn't released. I'm going to see if I can actually cut this out so that it can be removed a little bit more easily. Did I mention I'm just kind of making this up as I go along? did not work out. So apparently the sugar has stuck to this mold. I'm going to have to put something in here to keep that from happening next time. Hopefully this will be a much better experience. So I cut the mold so that I could remove this a little bit easier. Instead of letting it sit in there for a few days, really only about a half a day. Hoping that this will make the difference. sound of that. Beautiful. Yay! So, so far everything's gone pretty smoothly with this project, which brings me to this thing right here. When I designed the base, um, which basically supports most of the weight of the tank, I made these things a little bit too thin. You can see here with the mold, so I designed these little wings. So they need to be a little bit more robust, a little bit thicker, which meant I had to make a new positive. Hopefully I'll be able to get into the studio and um, use a vacuum form machine to create a new mold. If I can't do that, um, I'll have to come up with some kind of plan B. So I didn't really quite have the right tools with me today, um, but I decided I would put a little bit of a curve in the wood here so that the mold releases a little bit easier. Uh, so I found some all-purpose joint compound. Couldn't find my putty knife, but uh, I did find a nice piece of cardboard. So this part of the mold isn't really going to show because the bottom part of the tank, but it should make it a lot easier for it to release from the mold without damaging the sugar. Because these positives came out with kind of rough edges on them, I really need to kind of sand them down just to make sure they're going to sit flat, have a firm footing. I don't know 
what grit sandpaper you use for sugar. So I was hoping to be able to put together all of the sections of the tank so you guys could see it intact. Unfortunately, the base completely collapsed in transit. I think that the sugar was probably still a little bit on the wet side. So in lieu of that, I guess I'm going to show you guys a haircut done in the isolation of my studio. I'm now in week five of the self-containment residency. Pandemic is no excuse for poor grooming. It's much better. So I tried to glue these things together with white glue yesterday and um, the water absorbed into the paper underneath and they just completely fell apart. So trying hot glue now as an alternative. So I've been stepping up the drill bits from very small to larger until I get to this size. Otherwise, if I don't do it in increments, I will probably crack the sugar, which actually is surprisingly tough. Hmm, I don't think I bit in there right. These are not in there right, or I have a bent drill bit. I have a bent drill bit. So this is a dangerous part. I'm going to be trying to drill this with a spade bit, which um, possibilities is going to rip this thing to shreds. So the problem is, as this paddle spins around, it's basically smacking the sides of the sugar. When you drill through wood, it's not that big a deal. Drilling through sugar, that contact might be fatal. Really proud of making that work. Now it's large enough to be able to get one of these guys through there. Lovely. Because for some reason it wants to lean. You know, we have quake wax. Okay, that one should be fine. But the other one wants to wobble. Okay, let go, let go. Can you tuck that in? 
can you tuck that in so it can show? I think so. You can do anything. You want to hold this? Which? Just hold what? Hold the piece or move the tape, do something. Move the tape. In? Yeah. It's better. This one is leaning a lot. Yep. We're ready for the top layer. <laughs> 